How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 9 in this video series where I show you how to get a leap motion motion sensor to interact with a Raspberry Pi. Now if we open up Eclipse, in the last video I uh, we've started working on our uh, class that's going to be on the Raspberry Pi and inside our read input method we handled um, the updating the position of the mouse cursor based on the information sent from the leap motion. So that is our uh you know changing our screen position next we're going to do our mouse click so for that else if request so this uh request we get from our uh, leap motion computer so request dot equals click so if the string that we get is just says click well then we're going to perform a mouse click. So for that we are going to use our robot class again. So robot dot mouse press and what we got to do is input event is the parameter dot button uh, button one underscore mask now what is this button one underscore mask that is your mouse's left click so uh... what we're doing here is we're pressing the down that but what the robot's doing is pressing down on your left um... your left button on your mouse but it's not releasing it so now we have to do the exact same thing except for we gotta release this button so that it completes the click otherwise it's just gonna be holding down so instead of mouse press, we are going to do mouse release. So that is our mouse click. Done, simple, easy. Next we're going to do our scrolling up and scrolling down. So for that, else if request dot equals up. Uh, for that, we're going to use the robot dot mouse wheel method. Mouse wheel just takes an integer, so you know we're going to use negative one to scroll down on the screen, and then oh, sorry, negative one to scroll up on the screen, and then one to scroll down. So negative one is going to be the number we pass in to scroll down on the screen. That's for um, yeah, scrolling up. I mean, sorry, my. T my speech is all over the place today. And to scroll down, we're going to copy that, except we're going to change this to down. And instead of negative one, one. So, right here, we're scrolling up um, by passing in negative one to the mouse wheel method. Here, we're scrolling down by passing in one. That is click, scroll up, and scroll down. All done quickly. Now, we just got to handle our swipe. Now I've mentioned this already in this series that the swipe is intended to launch the start menu of your uh, operating system but it doesn't work for all the Raspberry Pi operating systems for example it did not work on the uh, Raspbian one but I'm putting this in here it's not going to harm your program if you put it in so you got nothing to lose here and you know just it'll show you how you can do the exact same thing on a Windows computer too so for the swipe gesture that's uh, when the swipe gesture is detected what we want to do is robot dot key press and as the parameter we're going to pass in key event dot vk underscore windows so what this is going to do is click the start button on your keyboard now just like we had to do with the mouse press and mouse release we have to release our key press so we've pressed it down now we have to do the key release method alright and now to finish this method off we started the try way up here we have to finish off and now put in our catch block so catch io exception E 
and we're going to show a J option pane. So what we're going to do is just copy this one up here to save the time. Paste it here. And we're going to uh, just change connected to communicating. So we're having trouble understanding what the uh, leap motion computer wants us to do. Now what time are we at in this video? We're only at five minutes. So let's actually just finish off this program completely and maybe do some testing. So, public. Uh, so, oh, sorry, we already uh, put in the main method. All we got to do now is create an instance of this class. So, leap pi. We're going to call it leap. And we're going to set it equal to a new leap pi. Now, what we got to do is we're going to create a server socket. So, server socket ss equals leap dot go online so it's going to call our go online method to create our server socket that's going to be uh, listening for uh, input and then we're going to have an if statement so if leap does not equal null well then leap dot read input and we're going to pass in SS as the parameter. That is the end of our program. Now let's test it. So we have both of these created inside our leap uh, default package inside our source folder. So what I'm going to do is open up a second IDE, jcreator in this case, but you know you don't need jcreator if you have a second IDE, or you could just launch it in PowerShell using the uh, Java and Java compiler commands. So I'm going to open up two of these IDEs and now I'm just going to navigate to uh, where this project is saved. If I can remember, hopefully. Uh, Java in my Eclipse uh, Leap PC source Leap Pi. So, if everything's gone according to plan, we should be able to run this. And there we go. So, our server is online. It's waiting for gestures on this. Uh, local host at this point on server 6000 or sorry port 6000 now we're going to run our leap pc on the eclipse and it's following my index finger you can see the output index fingers um, in the leap console over here now if i do a circle gesture that way i'm scrolling down if i do a circle gesture counterclockwise it's going up if i uh, bring my thumb in it clicks that's the click if I do a swipe gesture, it launches the start menu. So that's all really cool. Alright, so that's it. Our program is working just how we want it to. I think in the next video, I'm going to... Uh, it won't be a screen capture, but it'll be like a camera of me uh, using it on the Raspberry Pi just to show to you that it works. But you have everything done that you need. All you have to do is drag this leappy.java file onto your um, Raspberry Pi. So you'll have to use a USB key or something to bring it over. You'll then have to navigate to that USB key um, using the terminal on your uh, Raspberry Pi distribution. And you'll have to compile it. So you'll use the JVAC. So as long as you have Java already installed on it, which you should. If not, you know, just watch the tutorial on how to install Java on Raspberry Pi. Then what you're going to do is you're going to type in Javac, so J A V A C, leappy.java. So you just, you know, the Java compiler command. I'm actually going to stop this program while I'm talking to you guys. So the Java compiler command to create it, and then you just got to type Java dot, or sorry, Java space leappy. So actually, I'm going to go over that with you um, quickly. Where's PowerShell? Here it is. So you're to navigate to where you have the file saved. Now I'm not going to, so what you're going to first do is javac leappy.java. It's going to cause an error on mine because I don't have that file saved here. But that's what you're going to do. It's going to compile it. Then what you're going to do is get rid of that .java and get rid of the C on javac. 
and now when you run that it's gonna start your program and that's all you have to do as long as you have Java already installed and if you don't it's really easy to install and then you'll have the server on the Raspberry Pi the only thing you'll have to do I'm actually gonna reopen PowerShell is on the Raspberry Pi in the terminal first you wanna type in host name minus I it's capital I though so host name minus I and that will return the IP address now I've mentioned this in a earlier tutorial in this series but right here in our connect to server method we uh, have right now inet.getlocalhost instead you'd want to put a string so you'd get rid of this inet.getlocalhost and you put a string with your IP address in there so you know 1234.5456.7.8 whatever whatever your IP address is you put it in there inside a string and that's all there is to it we are done I'll do another tutorial just to show you how it's done I'm not sure when I'll have that done, so that's why I'm telling you this now in case you're in a rush to finish this. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this series. I'll do one video showing you the final product, but that's all the coding. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed making it for you. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to my channel. It'll really help it grow. Leave a comment on these videos and give them a like. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks, guys, once again, and I will see you in a future tutorial.